Have you ever heard of the peculiar disappearance of Mary Jane Barker? A case dubbed by the press as the largest search in South Jersey. Well, let's jump into it. Welcome to Peculiar Occurrences. I am your host, Lilith Nova. Mary Jane Barker was born in New Jersey in the U.S. on February 28, 1953 to Mr. and Mrs. Frank Barker. She had two older siblings, Carol Ann, eight years old, and Frank Jr., six years old, at the time of disappearance. Barker disappeared along with a four-month-old black spaniel puppy at 10.30 a.m. on Monday, February 25, 1957, in southeast Philadelphia. She was last seen playing in a nearby yard. She had went over to meet and play with a friend, six-year-old Maria Frita, the owner of the dog. The mothers believed that the children were secure in a fence in the backyard. They were inside during the time of disappearance. They went out to find that the four-year-old girl and dog were missing. The yard did sit on the brink of a wooded area in which contained a stream. The police were notified and by 1.30 p.m. the girl was considered kidnapped. On the next day, footprints were found by the stream bed that seemingly belonged to a man a child and a dog. The strange part about these footprints is they were heading uphill towards a gated area. In the area, searchers would have thought that they, the child would have been taken downhill away from the gated area. But the police stated that the footprints in the mud did match the shoe size of the child. Her disappearance shot off a massive search for a kidnapper or murderer. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, it was referred to as the largest search in South Jersey history. Hundreds of volunteers and police searched the city. On the first night alone, more than 200 people did a foot-by-foot -foot search. Eventually, well over a thousand people were involved. Sadly, her fourth birthday came and went with no sign of her. On Wednesday, February 27th, the parents made an appeal on television to anyone who may have kidnapped her, asking them to please leave the child in the nearest church. A man named Vern Loving, a 43-year-old floor sander and convicted child molester, had been questioned about the girl's disappearance. He said he had been near the Baker home that day. On Thursday, February 28th, the FBI ended up interrogating him again after a call about the girl involving a $500 ransom was received. He was eventually cleared of any wrongdoing in this case and the police made a statement trying to appeal to the kidnappers not to act in haste and hurt the girl. On Saturday, March 2nd, the FBI was officially called in, following the provisions of the Federal Kidnapping Act. Several nearby dumps were searched to no avail. On Sunday, March 3rd, Maria Freta, the owner of the small dog, went next door to a newly built branch house. The house was sitting empty, but was owned by the girl's uncle and aunt. The six-year-old girl, Maria, opened a closet door in the front of the house and her missing dog leaped out and onto her. Also in the closet was Barker, dead, in a seated position. The hood of her blue coat partially covering her blonde hair. She was found wearing the same clothes she had on the day that she had disappeared. Strangely, bits of fur from her hat was rubbed off. 
The police chief stated that he believed the girl had recently been put into the closet since the dog seemed like it had recently been fed. As well, there was no animal waste in the closet despite the dog not being house trained. This house had already been searched three times, including a visit by a repairman. No dog was ever hurt. No child was ever hurt. Although the closet door was found unlocked, a thumb screw sticking out of the closet apparently made it hard for a young child to be able to open. The door had a knob on the outside, but only a small turn latch on the inside. On March 4th, an autopsy indicated that Barker had nothing in her stomach in her system since the morning of her disappearance when she had had chocolate milk. There was no indication of foul play, no indication of violence or sexual misconduct. It was thought that she must have lived in that closet for about three days without food or drink. An inspection of the closet showed marks from her attempt to escape. Therefore, she had to have been alive when she was placed in the closet. It was found the dog must have been with her the entire time, though the dog was alive and frisky when they found her, which at first led investigators to believe that she had only been there a short time. The dog was taken to a veterinarian to be examined, and the veterinarian stated because of the kind of dog it was, it was viable for it to be energetic when it was found, though they deemed that the dog would have to be put down to check the contents of its stomach. The county coroner ruled her death a tragic accident, a case of starvation with exposure as a contributing factor. A spokesman for the coroner said that Barker must have became trapped in the closet and died of fright and starvation. She could not have suffocated since there was a small hole in the closet to provide air. On March 7th, the mayor ordered that all closet doors from now on would be required to have a small knob on the inside so that the door can be opened from both the out and inside. The order was made mandatory for all new houses to, that would be constructed or reconstructed. A ceremony in her memory was held on March 20th of the same year. Now I personally have a few questions on this case. First, what exactly led Mary Jane into a property two blocks away from her home? And what about the footprints of the man, the dog, and the child? Why wasn't Mary Jane found during the three previous searches? Was it mere coincidence that the house just happened to be owned by relatives of the owner of the missing dog? Was it just coincidence that Maria, the friend and owner of the missing dog, just happened to be the one to look into the closet and discover her friend? Is it actually possible for a four-year-old to starve and die in a closet while a puppy survives? And why was there absolutely no waste from the dog or the child in that closet? Was this a botched investigation or a tragic, horrific accident? Let me know what you think about this down below. And as a side note, this story is also leading to another story that I will be covering soon. So keep your eye out for that one. And if you want to see me do more stories like this, give this video a thumbs up, hit that uh, subscribe button, share this video, and hit that bell button so you know when I upload. And don't forget to pick up your Peculiar Occurrence merch in my description box below. Until next time, keep your eyes peeled for all things peculiar do 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 are you listening damn